Hello, dear friends. Here we are at Kardec Radio. We're here live from our one of our Chantilly, Virginia studios at Kardec Radio. Yes, and we are here happy to have you join us. I know we have not announced this live program, but we have been missing you. Yes, it's good to see you all, friends. Right? back again and pretty soon we are going to begin a new series of studies exactly in the next day or so we're gonna announce it we have been preparing so it's good to see you all and today we're being asked to reflect on a major proposal of the Christ consciousness blessed are the meek and peace loving you may be asking, but Vanessa, what do you know about it? Good point. I don't know either. I'm learning. But as a student, I'm sharing with you the study we've been doing, the reflections. You know, this month of January, we celebrate um, Martin Luther King Jr.'s day. And we celebrate... Uh, national religious freedom in the United States and there are so many ways for us to reflect on this and one of them is to make peace and this is a proposal of the Christ right I know Andrea Torres I've been missing you too all of you Alexandra Nora Brasil Karina Lisi Renata Casadeia our dear Kara Correa as well Hercules how are you my friend you know, we were not idle. We are still preparing the upcoming materials. The next one is going to be mediumship and attunement. Did you know that that book was written by Emmanuel? I know, almost 500 books, psychographed by Chico Xavier. Mediumship and attunement. In Portuguese, mediunidade e sintonia. You can find the PDF, just Google it. The Portuguese version, the English version, is being produced by our Kardec Radio team. And that's going to be the next, the upcoming study here at 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. We have many projects in the pipeline. Our team is working day in, day out to bring about the contents of the studies that we will share with you today. Valeria Benfica is here too. Hello Valeria. So we're going to be studying a passage that may soothe our hearts. We need it. You and I are perfectible beings. We are yet to be in true blossoming harmony. Big deal. That doesn't bother us. We need to focus on the good. Remember Emmanuel saying that. Seeking the good, so we need to change what we say, what we feel, what we do, and do the good, do the good, do the good, do the good, always, right? What a blessing, Carol Correa. And chapter nine of the Gospel According to Spiritism by Alan Kardec. Chapter nine. Apparently a simple chapter. We all want peace, right? Do you want peace? I do too. Who doesn't? Well, but the point is, at the end of the day, we don't feel at peace. We don't feel at ease. And what's going on? We keep thinking that others are the issue. Many lives many issues yes today we're reaping the causes of yesterday but today we're also sowing for tomorrow that is the most important part the effects i surrender myself and say oh i let go of the old i let in the new I let go of the old, I let in the new, I let go of the old, and I let in the new, the new what? The good. 
We come from an upbringing in our childhood, majority of us, if not all of us, of repressions. When our parents didn't know better, they were focusing in the needs of daily life. And it was about, no, you can't. And then we grow up doubting our capacity we're not blaming the parents but we're saying we need to change the way we educate one another by reinforcing the negative we're not going to bring about the positive we need to repeat the positive so we believe in it we co-create it remember it doesn't come out of the blue so jesus as the positive master, right? Positive master, he brings the positive. He says, come, blessed are the meek and peace loving. Look at the difference. He didn't give a list of don't, 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 don't. He did the opposite. He said, yes, this yes that blessed are the poor in spirit blessed are the simple blessed are the peacemakers but am i a peacemaker are we peacemaker majority of people on earth are still very angry rebellious many issues from previous lives and also in this life battling inside of us and projecting into our relationships that anger that frustration that disappointment we need to console our inner children we need to go within ourselves and console ourselves once we're adults we are supposed to be the ones console consoling our inner child looking at ourselves and say you know and you can use your hands to soothe your heart and say, I know right now you would love to be understood, but it's our turn to understand, telling their inner child, I understand you, but we cannot expect others to understand ourselves. It's hard, but that's our effort. As St. Francis said, it is in understanding that I am understood. Well, let's see what the gospel according to Spiritism says and break down from it. Shall we? Chapter 9. And we're going to talk about insults and violence. Blessed are the meek, for they shall possess the earth. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. You have learned what was said to the ancients, you shall not kill, and whoever kills shall deserve being condemned to judgment. But I say to you <clears throat> that whoever shows anger against his brother shall deserve being condemned to judgment. Whoever says his brother, Raka, shall deserve to be condemned by the council, and whoever says to him, you fool, shall deserve being condemned to the fire of hell. <clears throat> Those passages are in Matthew chapter 5, verses 4 to 22. Isn't that interesting? Do you consider yourself a violent person? Majority of us are still very violent because we react with aggression most of the time. Do you take insults easily or can you shield yourself? Do you easily contaminate yourself with uh, the emotions of others? And you may be asking, but Vanessa, is there a way for us not to? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. So, according to what we're reading here, and I'll read a little bit about Kardec's words and then some of the spirit messages. This chapter is not long, but it's very straightforward and very beautiful. It's very soothing for us and when i say soothing it's a counter proposal to violence 
It's a way to cool down the flames. As said the Nobel Prize Peace Prize, Thich Nhat Hanh, he has a book titled Anger, Cooling Down the Flames, right? And Kardec says, what did Jesus mean by these words? Blessed are the meek, for, shall, for they shall inherit, possess the earth. He who stated that one should renounce the things of this world and promise those of heaven. While waiting for the things of heaven, humans have need of the things of the earth in order to live. He only advises them not to attach more importance to the later than to the former. By these words, Jesus means that up till now, the things of the earth have been monopolized by aggressive persons to the harm of those who are meek and peace-loving, that the latter often lack the necessities while the former have the superfluous. He promises that justice will be rendered to the meek and peace-loving on earth as in heaven for they shall be called children of God. When the law of love and charity is finally the law of humankind, there will be no more selfishness. The weak and peace-loving will no longer be exploited or crushed by the strong and aggressive. Such will be the state of the earth, when according to the law of progress and the promise of Jesus, it becomes a blessed world through the expulsion of evil individuals so friends i know these teachings are not new to you right neither to me but what is the difference here tonight that we're proposing ourselves to feel it and to feel the scripture as jesus recommended to nicodemus reported in the book good news by umberto de campos through chico xavier to feel it, to feel it, we need to ask questions that pertain to ourselves. So let's see, are we aggressive? Somebody says something and we have to snap, to show and to defend ourselves and to prove a point. Do we? Are we angry? Are we always defensive? These are traits of people that are not meek yet. Is it possible to change it? Yes. People don't know that they can learn to be peacemakers. They can learn to be less aggressive, less violent. How? Neuroscientifically, by boosting the prefrontal cortex, by boosting the discernment. So, I would say this way, in the book, In Life Goes On, by Andre Lewis, in the second chapter, there is an analogy, an analogy that Ernest makes when talking to Evelyn. He says, Evelyn, you know, we are a triple composition. We are spirits connected to a spirit, enveloped by a spiritual body, connected to a physical body. In other words, he says, it's as if we have a coachman, the spirit, the carriage, and the horse. The horse is the spiritual body, the carriage is the physical body. So we need to give to this triple composition being elements to sustain the peace, the adjustment, the harmony. It's not enough if we're incarnated to take care of the spirit majority of people on earth live like discarnates being incarnated what do i mean by it i mean that they are only thinking and feeling and not paying attention that there is a reason why we are living on the earth 
And I, I mean that even though they are materialistics, they are not aware that this has a particular need that doesn't sustain itself immortally. Hmm? So we need to give to the spirit a certain diet different from the horse, different from the maintenance of the carriage. It's as if you are a dog owner, you have a leash and you have a dog. You, the spirit, the dog owner, the pair spirit, figuratively speaking, the leash, and then the dog. And then this dog has its needs, the physical body, but we don't pay attention to it. And then this dog meets another dog, the defense mechanism is up, they start reacting to one another, and it is resented in the dog owner, of course, it's a mess, right? This is us. So we need to be aware of our multidimensional approach in life to really sustain a harmonious, peacemaking attitude. The body needs to be at peace. Is it nourished well? Is it rested well? Is it exercised to what it needs? Is it clothed the way it needs, whether in cold or hot weather? Because it's pretty hard for people to feel at peace if the body is not in its best condition. And you may dispute, but Vanessa, I know people who are so poor, they don't have the minimum conditions, or people who are sick and they're so peaceful, and you're right. But that's for a different type of spirit one that is more evolved. We're talking about the average spirit that is incarnated and need to take care of their physical body. It's like a child. Many parents of little kids, babies, they are like, oh my gosh, I don't know. It's such a mess. My, cry my child is always crying. Well, have you investigated if they n have anything in need, like physically speaking? Hmm? Rarely, if ever, a child that is physically, you know, care, well cared of, physically speaking, will be uh, expressing discomfort. But then there's the emotional and the spiritual. So we're talking about the spiritual body, we're talking about the mental body, we're talking about ourselves, spirits. So we need to talk about the vibrational nutrition too. And that's what we're talking about today. Many people are always angry. They feel defensive. Why? Because they're constantly emanating difficult since their childhood, defensive, because the way they were raised and sending mental darts that are negative and attracting mental darts that are negative. There is one law, the law of the mental field. We need to repeat it time and again. It's written in the book, I think it's chapter 17 of the book Mechanisms of Mediumship by Andre Lewis. There he says, the law of the mental field is understood as I attract what I emit. But he doesn't say the time frame. If I have emitted in the past and it's intense and long lasting, we may feel it today. And then people say, oh my gosh, that person is so good and yet many things keep happening. Well, previous lives, right? Previous connections that are still living to date. So what is the ideal for us? What is the ideal? To select what we're emitting. Like a Wi-Fi 
I need to select the network that I am joining at each thought, each feeling, each word, each action. If I indulge, if I indulge in negative thoughts, slandering thoughts, angry thoughts, defensive thoughts, what kinds of spirits am I going to attract? What kinds of, what kind of spirits? Difficult ones, right? So I, as a co-creator, I can choose. Yes. Did you know it? You can choose. I can choose. Right, so Souza, Rihanna, Hippolyta, how are you, Susan, Haiti Patrick, Liam, oh, McCurphy, Claire, how are you, Katie, Yushkak, good to see you, friends, sorry for the interruption, thank you, Susan, and friends, you can choose, I can choose, that's the most empowering part of it all, book, thought, life by Emmanuel. Read it. We have studies already on Facebook at Kardec Radio, at the YouTube of Kardec Radio as well. Thought and life. I can choose. You can choose. I don't like that thought. I don't like that feeling. I say, breathe in and out. Because breathing in and out when you're incarnated, you shift the uh, activation of your autonomic system and instead of being in a defensive position which is the sympathetic system you activate the parasympathetic when you're relaxed you can think more clearly and then you tell yourself I am a child of God I can do better with kindness huh? Right, Nina Dui? Kindness. And I tell myself, I can do it. I choose the good. I don't need to be worried about the attacks, the misunderstandings. I can already visualize when we'll be reunited in peace and harmony. That's the goal. Meanwhile, we keep working with effort and repetition, as Andre Louis says in the book Evolution into Worlds. And one day, it's going to be automated. Right, Michael? Welcome. Bringing the presence of Archangel Michael. Thank you, Michael. So that's why this chapter is so beautiful. Because Christ's proposal is positive. He's the positive master. He's not a punisher. Christ Jesus is a positive physician for us. A positive therapist for us. He only invites us to think the good, to feel the good, to visualize the good and to mold the good with all the resources we have at hand. He tells us every time, I believe in you, so should you do. So should you do the same. Believe in yourself. Blessed are the meek, it's up to you, but if you are, good for you. That's what he's saying to us. He's saying, choose the good for God's sakes. That's why he says, I am bringing to you the good news. Good news. Mm -hmm. The good news, which is only to bring us joy, reinforcing our hope and our courage. Yes, courage to begin the new. Every day, it's vital that I try something new. Because if I don't expand a little bit to a new scenario, how is my life going to improve? Every day, 
something new. It can be a new word that we learned in a dictionary. It can be a new video of positive thoughts that we have watched. It can be a positive attitude we have never tried before. It can be a positive affirmation that we write down. It can be anything positive. And Jesus is the positive master. And he brings to us, and I'll reassure you, the Gospel according to Spiritism, chapter 9. And Kardec is so such a good educator that he brings to us messages of the good spirits, reinforcing to us that it's possible. The first message is about affability and meekness. He says the following. I won't be able to read every everything, but just tiny bits because these are spirit messages that are immortalized because they will never be out dated benevolence towards one's f fellow beings the fruit of love towards one's neighbor produces the affability and meekness that are its manifestation however one must not always trust in appearances good manners and worldly skill can lend the veneer of such qualities right the world is full of such individuals. They have a smile on their lips and venom in their hearts. Who are meek as long as nothing angers them, but who bite back at the least contra contrariety, whose silver tongue when they speak to your face changes into a poisoned arrow when they speak behind your back. And he says, it is not enough for lips to flow with milk and honey, because if the heart does not do the same, it is hypocrisy. Right? We don't want to be hypocrites any longer. And I say any longer because a sure thing in the past we were, previous lives, and sometimes unnoticingly we do. Often we are not aware. But then when we do, we change ourselves. Hello, Rita Di Cassia. Happy New Year. Hello, Angie. How are you? Angie's back tomorrow. Right, Angie? With the study of a new book, Among Brothers of Other Lands. Beautiful. Lea Severo is with us. Hello, Lea. So, friends, affability is not about appearances. It's really being kind. Well, we're in the school of life on Earth. So, we can ask ourselves, Google a list of acts of kindness and do a check mark. Sometimes we don't know how to be kind because we are not taught. It's something we are learning. So let us practice, right, friend? Right? Thank you, Angie. Let us practice. I know I make mistakes, but I'm not going to punish myself. I'm going to forgive myself so I'm able to forgive others. But I'm going to begin a new, a new proposal. That's the peace for myself, with myself. Peacemaker with myself first. There are people who are in a battle with themselves. They look at themselves and they're always criticizing themselves. But that's bad. Because then I will reproduce that dialogue with everyone around me and all of my relationships are going to be difficult. And I will be perceiving the world as a battlefield, but it's not. Mm -mm. God is good and God created us for good things. Yes, and Spiritism says so. And Christ came to say it. Do you believe in it? Scale of zero to 10. How much do you believe that God is good and created us in the world for good things? Scale of zero to 10. Do you believe it 100% or 70%? 50%? Not so sure. Let's think about it. Because life will only be beautiful 
when we truly feel that we are heirs of God, says Joana de Angelis in her book, Child of God, through Divaldo Franco. Yes, and that's why we sing it all the time. I am a child of God. If you are a child of God, do you think God is not taking care of you? I am a child of God, right, Leia Severo? A hundred percent. I reincarnated to learn to do good. So I wake up every day and I say, today I want to do the good. I want to seek the good in every scenario. Yes, you can talk to your best friend and cry a little bit, lean on the shoulder. But you know, that's just to catch your breath and say, I know the world is here as a school. What can I learn from it? Why is God, you know, allowing this door to be closed? Or this window? Hmm. He wants me to open another door. God, help me see where the other door is or where the key to the other door is. Sometimes it's already open. But our stubbornness, our pride, our ego does not allow us to see it. So let go. Hmm? Like the saying goes, I let go of the old. I let in the new. I let go of the old. I let in the new. Hmm? Shall we? And that's why the next message in this chapter 9 of the Gospel according to Spiritism is titled Patience. Because to be a peacemaker, I needed to learn patience. A spirit friend that according to Divaldo Franco is a ver the very Joanna de Angelis. Yes. She says, pain is a blessing that God sends upon the elect. Therefore, do not become troubled when you suffer. Mm -hmm. Instead, bless Almighty God, through, who through the pain of this world has marked you out for the glory in heaven. Be patient. Patience is a form of charity, and you must practice the law of charity taught by Christ, the envoy of God. Courage, my friends. Christ is your model. He suffered more than any of you and had nothing for which to reproach himself, whereas you have your past to expiate and to strengthen you for the future. So be patient, be Christian. This word sums up everything. You know, I come from an Italian background and I like it. Because sometimes we, we're just like this. We're like, oh, I don't agree with this. And then we catch our breath and say, okay, 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 let's reconsider. That was just an impulse. Until one day we won't have this bipolarity, right? Of reactions. We will no longer react. One day we'll just think like Jesus and think, be in silence and then take action in harmony. Hmm? It's going to be like a masterpiece. When you see the scenarios of Jesus Christ, you see pure harmony in his posture, in his gestures, the way he looked, the tone of his voice. It was at every minutious detail it was a beautiful painting of God on earth, right? And she's saying when we are doing good, we always say 100% for sure. But when the problems hit us, we lose faith. However, she's saying we should do the contrary, have even more faith that things will get better soon. Yes, we need courage, patience, faith, it out. It shall also pass. Beautiful, Angie. Magical sentence by Mother Mary. It shall pass. That's the faith we need. 
and that's what she recommended to Chico Xavier in the most critical times it shall pass. So when times are difficult, let's be as surrendered to God as Mother Mary and say to ourselves, it shall pass, I believe in it. One day, things will be different and visualize the good because we're co-creating. It's not gonna happen out of the blue. We need to visualize it. We need to visualize that beautiful scenario because when we do, we create living images that will boost the present to get to that future. It's gonna get there when we push it. So let us visualize the good and push the good. Push, push the good like a baby that is being born, right? And in this chapter, there is a message by a spirit named Lazar about obedience and resignation. To be peacemaker, we need to obey God's will. And you may be asking me, I don't know what God's will. Well, we need to reflect, pray, meditate, and when we contemplate nature, we'll see. It's easy to identify God's will because it comes with his trademark, love and peace. Rarely in anger, if ever, we'll find, we'll find God's will. We need to cool down the flames. Learn it. Effort, repetition. And talking about anger, the last part of this chapter, there are two messages about anger. One of them that was written by the spirit Hanneman, who was the father of homeopathy. Yes, Hanneman was one of the spirits that helped the team of the codification to bring these messages. So if you go to chapter 9 of the Gospel According to Spiritism, item 10, Hanneman is going to talk about anger and demythify the fact that people believe that anger is in the body. It's not. It's in us. Anger is not bad. What is bad is not to know what to do with it. Once we learn how to manage it, we are able then to one day not even feel it anymore. But at this time, it's a defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. When we feel something is threatening, we activate this defensiveness. And it may be for a fight response or a flight response. And in that we may feel anger, but one day we won't need it anymore because we will know that there is no need for us to be in that threatened position, okay? Is there anything that threatens you nowadays? Makes you feel fear? Fear, fear is not bad as well as anger because it's in the realm of our defense mechanism. But we need to manage fear and give a new meaning to the stimuli that are being translated as threats. Hmm? Sometimes, because of guilt, we accumulate all these 10,000 other feelings. Mm -hmm. So we need to study ourselves to rid ourselves of fear and anger because they are no longer needed. There will be a day we won't feel it anymore. For now, we need to manage. The dream of not feeling fear or anger is just a visualization for the future. For now, our dream, very tangible one, is to visualize our management of fear and anger. Mm -hmm. Hanneman says, 
that the body does not cause anger in persons who do not have it, just as it does not cause the other vices. All virtues and all vices are inherent to the spirit. Otherwise, where would the merit and responsibility be? Hmm? My fellow spiritists, does experience not show you how far the power of will can go in light of truly miraculous transformations that you see happening? So tell yourselves that humans do not remain vice-prone unless they want to remain vice-prone. Those who want to correct themselves always can. Otherwise, there would be no law of progress for human beings. Hanneman is in the team of the promise consoler because he is now being the positive master for us. Right? He's telling us, yes, you can. So tonight, if you started this study doubting that you can be a peacemaker, doubting that you can be mild, meek, we're not saying a doormat. We're just saying at peace, promoting peace, sometimes without words, the peace within. We end this chapter with Hanneman's statement, which is an affirmation. Yes, you can. So we look at ourselves in the mirror today, put our hands in our hearts and say to ourselves, I am a peacemaker. I am a peacemaker. And if you're saying, but Vanessa, I'm not. I doubt it. Well, but you won't become if you don't affirm to yourself. If you don't remodel yourself. If you don't redesign your mind first. And then everything else is going to be aligned. So we need to affirm to ourselves. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, I am a peacemaker. I am a peace-loving person. I am meek. I can control my emotions. I can manage my anger. I am patient. Daily, let us nourish ourselves by reaffirming this and transform our lives for the better. Shall we, friends? I'm going to invite you to say a prayer because when we pray together, we're uniting our forces intercontinentally to really boost ourselves to another level. Shall we, friends? Thank you, dear God, for sending these beautiful spirits that put together these teachings for us in Spiritism, reminding us of our true nature, that we progress always, we never regress. Your mercy and your love for us is so immense that we begin to feel almost like spoiled by you, by your love, spoiled in the sense of your infinite providence. Thank you for your patience with us and for stimulating us towards patience. Please help us. Help others. Support others. As we would like to be supported. We pray, dear Lord, that everybody who is right now in need of a loving embrace, validation for their feelings, and a greater peaceful environment, may they feel themselves empowered to be the very light where they are. We thank you for the opportunity of being here, for our togetherness, and the opportunity of being reunited once again tomorrow. And so be it. So, Thank you, dear Rihanna. So, it's likely that in the next day or so, I will tell you later, we'll be starting the study, Mediumship and Attunement by Emmanuel, 
Stru Chico Xavier here at Kardec Radio. For now, a big hug. Wonderful peacemaking decisions and feelings. And until next time, dear friends, God willing, bye-bye. <laughs>